or just he's laughing all the way to the bank. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, particularly polar bears are at, at or near record highs, according to U.S. Geological Survey. The only way they're threatened, and they're not even threatened here, if you, if there's, there's a computer models. The bottom line is they've survived much warmer periods than the, that's even being contemplated. That's right. And, and they're, it's all based on computer models, which Ivy League lead expert in forecasting said the U.N. climate models violate the basic principles of forecasting, something like 70 out of 84 principles it violates 70 of them these are just some people have called them sony playstation video games that's how they get the fear they have to posit and obama's uh, energy secretary stephen chu is the, is the biggest embarrassment on this he will talk about what he thinks is going to happen in the year 2100 and act as though it's evidence of today top japanese scientists just came out in i believe january or february and said that global warming is now akin to astrology that's the level we've reached here if you read your horoscope every day, it's written in such a way that it's vaguely worded that pretty much anything happens, you can say your horoscope was right. Well, the same way with global warming. They're now getting away from the phrase global warming. They want to call it global weirding in the words of Thomas Friedman. Exactly. That's, That's what I wanted to ask you about uh, next is the, it, uh, the New York Times, as you know, it got leaked that one of these PR firms had written up the new pitch for the White House and the Democrats was that we're – losing our atmosphere it's deteriorating climate change stress when it's over cold that that was caused by man well, stress when it's hot i mean they're i mean we've got them red-handed running around fear-mongering and now that people are waking up to them gore's now going we'll all be dead in five years it's not 20 now give me the money and he publicly owns the trading companies in chicago and england that the money's going to go into i mean how asinine is this Oh, he is, he's, he's partners and affiliated with groups that have already invested a billion dollars in, I think, 40 different companies. They are, he is poised, he went from, a, uh, from one or two million dollar net worth to over a hundred million now, according to Bloomberg News. And now he's poised to be the first, the world's first carbon billionaire. But he's not doing it through entrepreneurship. He's doing it through lobbying the government to, to pass unneeded mandates that, that are going to make people, taxes. real people suffer. It's taxes. Yeah, these are, but, but even beyond taxes, it is a moral question. We have poor Africans in, in places like Chad who have global warming inspired bans on charcoal. They can't cook, they can't heat their huts because they're worried about global warming. Mandates Mark, I gotta stop so you again. Above. Mark, I gotta stop you and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to shut up and let you talk. But when I hear you saying all this truth, I gotta say this and then I want you to go over it. I've read the actual UN studies. It's not even our studies, it's their studies. They admit that their global warming cuts of 20% could kill hundreds of millions of people. If they cut it by 50%, like they're saying, billions. They know, and they're eugenicists, and so they brag that they've got to do this to cut the numbers. These are cold-blooded killers, and, and, but then they say we're being paid by oil companies. We're stating facts. They're the ones that are now being paid by oil companies as Exxon Mobil's gotten on board for the global scam. Now, I'm going to shut up. Go over the numbers of what this will do to the third world. Well, the third world, I mean, as I said, it is a moral question. We have Thomas Friedman, New York Times columnist, who wrote this uh, you know, recent book. He's been on a book tour. Uh, I believe he was paid, I want to say, $175,000 to go speak in San Francisco. He is telling India, don't follow us. Don't follow the U.S. model of economic success. The earth can't handle it. You don't need to do it. He's telling a country where 40% of its people don't have access to electricity. This is what they're calling the new form of colonialism. It's white, wealthy Westerners telling poor people of color in the third world that they can't have prosperity and development like we can. In other words, they need to remain in the nasty, brutish, short life with no running water, no electricity, no modern medicine, no defibrillators, no... Uh, no, no, no treatments, no modern dentistry, no clean water, no clean air, living in huts made of dung because they're living eco-friendly. I've met what I call environmental missionaries, green missionaries, wealthy white people that come. In this particular case, it was a, a young woman from Minnesota who was in Africa telling poor South Africans that they, they were living more earth-friendly and that the U.S. way of life was total B.S meaning prosperity and running water. Like and, Mark, let me stop you. I've seen all the major studies, their own internal studies. The Royal Commission, 1944 to 49, they decided to have the population boom, to not let the third world develop, and they knew it would increase numbers and actually hurt uh, the environment, the way they're living in squalor actually hurts the environment instead of moving to the industrial system and the new advanced cleaner system. So this is economic warfare, is it not? Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, the, the, the developing world is poised to have the same 
miracle that the Western world had in the 20th century, except for unfounded global warming fears. Just to give you a few more examples, white wealthy Westerners in England, a grocery market chain, announced they were going to buy local. Well, this didn't sit well with poor Kenyan farmers whose livelihood depended on food exports to England. That's another example of this. You have across, again, using India, environmentalists have opposed various dams to bring in hydroelectric power because of environmental impacts. And I've seen it down in the Amazon rainforest. I did a documentary in 2000. Wealthy celebrities fly in on carbon spoon jets, pr pr stop some development down there, and then they fly back home to their Bel Air mansion. This is a new form of colonialism. It's a colonialism that keeps poor people poor. I interviewed uh, Dr. Walter Williams. He's a uh, African American economist, George Mason University. He said that many Westerners want to see the developing world poor because it's almost like going to visit, treating people like there's. There's actually a whole thing called poverty tourism now, where you go and you see people live and you think, oh, isn't that neat? Isn't that great? And the bottom line is environmental policy is going to keep them living that way. That's I right. Environmental... And these control freak uh, uh, communists who work for the big banks, because again, they don't want a free market either. That's why the ultra rich always fund the poor. Uh, to set up socialism, to conduit the money and power to the elites. They are saying they want the same system here. They want to cut the population. Uh, Brown's head uh, uh, eco advisor says cut the population from 60 million to 30 million, cut yeah, the population yeah. from 25 million. So, so they want to bring that here. And, and then they're going to fly around on their limousine liberal helicopters while we're in squalor. These are control freaks. I talked to well, them. I call it, I compare it to the old Soviet Politburo where the members of the party yes. got all the perks. You have Arnold Schwarzenegger who, in his radio address just three weeks ago, told Californians that to lower their carbon footprint, they should be air-drying clothes, and that if you air-dried your clothes every day for six months, you'd save, you know, I don't know, X amount of pounds. The same Arnold Schwarzenegger, who the L.A. Times a year before chastised him for commuting to work in a private jet, a daily commute in his private jet. He's now telling Californians to use to hang their clothes out in the air. Dry, out in the air. This is the level, and this is Al Gore flying the private jets, Leonardo DiCaprio. This is the it's, the, it's that two tiered system. The, the masses live one way and the, the party rulers live another. And but that's, that's okay. Found. That's okay because DiCaprio and Schwarzenegger and all of them are heavily invested in the carbon credit companies. They buy those from themselves. Right. And also, they'll, they'll brag. I mean, at one point, Gore's film, he bragged that it was carbon neutral. Someone did the calculations. He only paid, I, I want to say the number was under $500. It was some absurd number. You can make a whole Hollywood film with all the carbon and claim you're carbon neutral for just $500. I, I don't think other people are getting charged so low. But we're finding Hollywood actors buying, you know, for all the flying they do and for being in entertainment, they're buying offsets. And what's happening is they're, they're either preserving land in Africa or planting trees. I, before I left the U.S. Senate, I met with the Norwegian embassy. Yeah, the Norwegian embassy. And they were touting this new thing that they're essentially going to pay poor countries not to develop. And this is the ultimate form of the new colonialism I'm talking about. I told them I hope they failed. This was in a meeting you know, in the U.S. Senate. They sought it out with me. I said all that's going to happen is your money from, from the U.N. and from international agencies are going to go to corrupt third world dictators. They're going to get the money. The people are going to suffer as their country continues not to develop. As they're living in huts you know, made of dung, these wealthy Norwegians are going to sit back and say, ah, oh, we're saving the planet. Isn't this great? And we're helping these poor people by giving to these corrupt governments. That is what's wrong right now in terms of international policy. What we need to do, well, I interviewed a South African activist who said it best. If the Western wealthy world really doesn't want the, the developing world to develop, they ought to, they ought to lead by example. In other words, they should level cities like Washington, Rotterdam, London, and return them back to swamps and jungles before they can tell people in Africa and people in South America and Asia not to develop their land. And that didn't go over too well with a lot of development actors. This was at a U.N. conference that this, uh, you know, the South Africans said it. But I think he was dead on. We have no business telling these countries, paying them, bribing them, whatever word you want to use, not to develop when, if, when, when it's not our kids that are dying of high infant mortality and short life expectancy. Uh, I interviewed Chevy Chase on the mall on one of these Earth Days, the actor. He said, socialism works. Cuba was the model. This is the mindset of the modern environmental movement, and sadly, it's infected many in this new administration. And meanwhile, Chevy Chase is worth literally $100 million or more. Uh, you know, talking to these people uh, in government and, and reading their writings, the high-level ones cold-bloodedly know this is a business, this is, this is to control, this is to freeze the third yeah, world. I mean
They're very honest. Ben Cardin, Democrat from Maryland, told the Washington Post 